Welcome back folks, this is video number two. Obviously we had the first video where we showed you the foundations, uh, we showed you the oversight, the slab, insulation underneath the slab. This next one will be from the DPC upwards to the first lift where the joist would normally go in and then you have a scaffold up and then you have your second lift up to the wall plate height ready to put the roof on. Hope you enjoy it folks. Make sure you like and subscribe. There you go. We're now up to joist level. Some salt coming out of these bricks. As you can see, the catnick lentils have been bed on. Obviously on the edge of these uh, doorways, you'll have a cavity closer. That's why the insulation's not right up to the end. Same with the windows. Catnick bed on there. Obviously, all the drainage is in now. That manhole's gone in. And then all the gullies. Take drain pipes, overflows, whatever from this kitchen. Big catnick on there. Over the top of the patio doors. And then over the weekend, the lads have got that steel in there. Obviously that wall underneath it's coming down, but we've left it in for now to keep the house secure. I think we're going to have a bit of rain today. Lads have been busy. So that Ben's setting out there. I've put this front steel in. This is obviously it's stepped back in the front here. So there'll be a steel in. Uh, you can see it's been marked out there on the wall. Two steels, both skins. It's a pad stone got to be cut in there where he's marking it out. Obviously this steel's in now. Don't ask me why the insert outside one is a hell of a lot bigger than the outside one. I know it's taking the weight of the wall plate, but it's a bit overkill if you ask me, but that's engineers for you. Tommy's getting a mix on there. Got some of this block work up. Just waiting for the scaffold. And there's Bippers again. Hands in his pockets. Oh, oh, he's actually left in the steel. Get the steel in the water. <laughs> I think we're going to have to call it, Bob. We've had a go, but it's fucking shocking. All right, so scaffolding's up now, and we're doing the next lift. And as you can see, that bottom portion there is having a lower roof on it, so it's now have to be returned in and across to the existing house. Insulation's going in. You can see the tyres are built there. And then what you can see here, it's obviously over the top of the lentils, you have to call, put what you call a cavity tray. So the water comes down here, down there, and then out of the weep holes here that are built in. Also got Mr. John there doing a bit of welding for us on some of the steel. And this is where you get the tricky part. Obviously now we've returned in there. And where we've returned in, it's not quite to gauge. So as you can see there, we've got three quarters bricks. It's not good really putting cuts in, but sometimes you just have to. And then it returns. And there you can see, it runs into the existing house, which is 
slightly out of level the house is so trying to get this back engaged has been a bit of a nightmare but we'll get it there and then we have to do the same toothing out all the way up take the halves out tie them with the rest of the house Tommy's just getting us another mix on. As soon as this is up and the roof's on the top there, we can get this scaffolding down and get this lower portion. Wall plates are already on, as you can see. Straps are on, ready for this lower roof to go on. Online. Right, so we've had the fabricator out. He's been out and had to do some on-site welding. Obviously, we've got these steels here. Obviously, there's a doorway going to be underneath there. So, we're about to be welded and then sat on that pad stone. And I'll just show you now quickly. There you can go. Uh, you can see that there's a step back here because when you build an extension, the council basically don't want you to run flush with the house. You need to step it back. So, there's two steels there. And it runs into that steel that's in the wall obviously underneath there you can see the marks on the wall there's going to be a doorway knocked out so that has had to be on-site welded it has to be welded to a certain spec As you can see the thickness of those walls there and then we can return the brickwork then across there like we've done on the back I'll show you on the back I've already shown you once Tommy must be cold, his odds up again. There you can see, it returns across the back over the top of the steel. Uh, so obviously, we're now up to uh, the first lift. We've got scaffolding up, we've got lentils on for the first set of windows. Uh, I'm now on my way to the merchants. It's not always glorious, I'm not always in the office, undertaking all the nice warm tasks generally half the time outside working with the lads so at the minute i'm just literally off to fetch some sand because we can't get a delivery till tomorrow so the lads need sand they need to keep uh, working so obviously i'm mr delivery driver today so i've got many hats within this business not just the actual building side and not just the actual pricing on the you know paperwork that goes with it so we're uh, off we go, let's go get some sand. <laughs> this is what you get working with these lads sometimes. <laughs> Giggling constantly. <laughs> right ladies and gentlemen, one thing you have to watch when you're laying, when you live in the lovely UK, is it's constantly raining. If you use wet bricks, this is what you get. You can't put them up. So that's gonna have to be redone. And I've just, and I've just sat down on a pack of insulation. Is, uh, and it's soaked, so now I've got a wet bum. Oh god. Tommy's telling me now he's got the best mix he's ever done in his life. Right, so what we've had to do now, you'll have to excuse the deep voice, I've got a bit of a cold in the car. So obviously we've got to build that so it steps back and design it so that porch roof is right that basically comes across the bay window here. So obviously we've built the steels then up on the top. I'll show you them in a sec. There you can go. See, we've got the steels in there, it's set back. Obviously, the line of the bay windows there will travel through, and that roof will be built in there. You can see all the wee poles there, they've been built in on them cavity trays, like I showed you earlier. And obviously, you can see that steel that we got in earlier. And then that's not been built off. And that window there has got to move this way. So the window starts there and it finishes here. And obviously that bit's got to be filled in and then the rest of it, that's got to go. And then a new window in there. So all exciting, not long now, we'll be up to wall plate and then the next one will be for the roof. Obviously you can see in there, we haven't been able to get any joists in yet 
because the height is a bit ambiguous. We've drilled through and obviously we've got the height from where the steel is there. But we've decided to leave it till we can actually take this wall down here. All that, all that's going obviously. And it allows us to uh, make this room, big massive room here. And also what we've got is on the drawing, it's got planned for roof trusses which is all very well and good. We can order them. You know, we can get them ordered, but the thing we've got is uh, we can basically, we can estimate the size from the drawing, but it's never going to be 100% because the actual building itself is slightly out of level. There's, there's bits and bobs that, you know, that can actually, if you order those trusses now, you could get it and they can end up being too small, but too big or what have you. So we always like to order trusses when we know what size they need. The problem we've got is they're gonna take about six weeks and the customer wants the roof on and sorted by them because, or before them because the scaffold is on next door's drive and they need to get the caravan out. And you know, you get you get all this kind of stuff as built <laughs> that you have to deal with. But yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that roof we're gonna go back to the engineer and speak to him and get some sizes to do it traditionally. It's only, I would imagine a 7 by 2 will be fine, straight up with some purlins built into the actual gable because there's a gable built up there. So we're gonna approach it that way to save time. All right, now we've got stuff up top at the scaffold. We use a wench. There you go, get yourself a pulley wheel, folks. Or is a sex machine. <laughs> <laughs> And get your bricks up a lot easier than carrying them up on your shoulder. Back. So we're up top lift on scaffold now, last push, get it up to wall plate and we can get this roof on. Obviously we want cat neck lentils over these windows. 150 bear in there. With the cavity tray over the top. Like we did on the lower level. Again there, same. Cross the stuff. Minimum 150 bearing, cavity tray across the top. <coughs> obviously, you've got to think about when you're building that extension. Obviously, we've got a flue there. That's not to an external wall. Luckily, the boiler's been moved to over there somewhere on that external wall. And then, as we're tying this in the back there, this window has been moved slightly, so it's coming over this way, starting from there to about there. So, new window, new catnick over the top, so we're gonna have to take some tiles off there to sort that out. It's getting there, folks. So at this stage in the job, obviously you're up on a scaffolding, so it's important that, you know, obviously we've got all these lot there on there. We've got to make sure that you don't overload it. Check with your scaffold there. Check what kind of loading you can get on it. This is an independent scaffolding, so we can load it out of steel tubes as well. So you can not have much problem really loading this one out. All right, so now we've built up. We've got the wall plate on over there. So we're up now, ready for the roof. Uh, Got some essian on it now because it's been it's been quite cold and damp, so just to protect the bricks, you know, keeps the the wind blows through the holes in the essian and uh, stops them freezing up, keeps the damp off them. So obviously there you can see we've had to do it again with the catnip lintels. You've got your weep holes in there, and then leap under there. There's a cavity tree that will be lipped onto that next block there when the block works built on top of there. And then any water then, let me remove this brick. Sorry. So any water then comes down the cavity, hits the cavity tree and then comes out the weep holes. Right, let's just have a look around here. You can see the wall plates on. And it's just underneath there, that's at the right height. We've got 
got another cabinet lintel there. Now the reason this one's got no cavity to over it is because the soffit sits directly on top of it there. So there actually is no cavity, it's all part of the soffit. It's obviously set back there. And then around the back here. Obviously we've got this windy. It started from there, that portion of the bit where it's going. And then where that mark is on the window there that we've drawn in the dirt. That's where the new pillar will be coming, so the window will be there. At the centre of the uh, new bed, bedroom, bathroom, whatever is going to be there. Obviously, like I say, we've got full protection in there. We've just got a, a, like a small scaffold because we haven't been able to put the joists in because of obviously that steel down there. As you can see from here. Uh, that steel wasn't able to go in at first to carry the joists. So them joists can now go in. So next job is to get this roof on. So we'll run a ridge through there, carry the wall plate through here, got the wall plate on the front, and then extend the roof, build the gable end up. As you can see, rotten. What's happened here is the fault is all broken down, and hence why all that wall, all the wall and all the fascia and the window underneath is black. Some nice pointing there, eh? It's a good job that's coming down. So I think it's going to be recommended that while we're up here, that roof is refalted, rebattened, just checked for any rot, and then the tiles can go back on. Right, so as you can see behind me, that it's rotten. Some of this roof, the false, is totally broken down. You can see rotten, battened. So we're going to be recommending to the customer that that part of the roof is redone as well when we put this new part back on. So yeah, that's basically where you go from here, folks. All right, folks, that concludes the second part. So we've gone basically from the slab of the DPC, I think we were slightly above in the last video, but yeah, from there up to the first lift, we've had a scaffold, and then we've gone from second lift up to the wall plate. So the next video will be us putting the roof on. So if you want to join us for that, make sure you like and subscribe and uh, hit the bell icon, and then you'll be able to see that next video pop up when we upload it. Cheers, folks. Thanks for your support. See you again.